Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is uh, Nursing Practice Made Easy. My name is Patrick, I'm your RN uh, for today. So this video is especially for the student nurses in the Caribbean region, in the, in the um, CARICOM region. This video is especially for you who will be sitting the RENR, which is the Regional Examination for Nurses Registration. All right, so all of you guys out there in Jamaica, out in Belize, in um, Cayman Islands, Trinidad and Tobago, in Barbados, in Antigua, Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, all you guys out there in the Dominican Republic. All right, this video is especially for you. This is part three of the follow-up nursing practicum. So it is called the SPAN, AKA SPAN, and uh, our span of duty as you uh, well know it. It's really a practical assessment of the nurse or the, um, in the fourth year of nursing practice who is looking to sit the examination or the written examination. In your neck of the woods, the examination is usually sat in um, October, the first week in October, and there is another sitting in the first week of April. All right, so at this time of the year, um, this is June, usually the practicum would start around May and go down to somewhere in July. So I know at this time of the year, all the students are really in a, in a preparation mode. So this video is geared towards helping you with this practicum. So if you check out video number one, looking at what is the span and what are some of the things that you want to consider about it. Video number two talks about what it is that you do from the time you're preparing to get onto the unit to start um, to deal with the patient. So this in this video, I'll be walking you through how you present your patient, how you go about finding information on your patient that is relevant and that will actually help you when it comes on to completing the practical part of it. So, um, you know, you will be marked. Usually you have two examiners or three examiners. Uh, one of those examiners, of course, is an external examiner. And one is internal. If it is two, it can be two internal, one external. But either way, you always have an external examiner. And that is to ensure the reliability of the exam as well as the integrity of the exam and to ensure that those goals that are set out in those objectives to be marked are met. So the, the, the rubric that the examiner will use to mark you, it does have certain areas that you must cover. There are really 21 asterisk points in those, uh, on that rubric and all of them of course have uh, scores attached to them and you must get a certain score. But all the asterisk points you must score a passing score for uh, so that you can actually complete the examination. So the areas that you'll be testing on, of course, they will look looking to see how well you use um, the knowledge that's in the cognitive aspect of it and take it and demonstrate it in the psychomotor, looking at how you do management of patient care, looking at your general deportment, uh, looking at your critical thinking skills, your knowledge, looking at your use of the nursing process and your accurate use of the nursing process. We'll be um, looking at uh, your safety and security, how you keep the patient safe, infection control. Uh, we'll testing you on ethical principles, ethical and legal principles. So it covers everything. So that is really what it is. And these videos, um, you know, we'll check them out. Um, subscribe like share leave a comment and just um you know so you can get all this information that you need all right so today we're going to be i'm going to be telling you and showing you what are the things that you want to consider uh in making a good patient presentations usually uh before the pandemic three patients or three clients is what you would be assigned and if you check out video number two uh, on SPAN, just go in the channel and look and you will see um, uh, RNR SPAN preparation or SPAN practicum and you will see the part two. It will tell you, uh, you know, when it comes on to selecting the patients, all the information is in there so you can go and check out that video. Um, but um, 
before the pandemic, you would have had uh, three three clients, three patients to manage and to finish them within a four hour period of time, of course, make your presentation, do your practical demonstrations and all of that. All right. In subsequent video, you will get live demonstration in, um, you know, dressing, in, in, in medication administration and even the patient preparation itself. So this is your channel. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, hit the like button, share it, all right, and leave a comment and all of that. All right, so today uh, I'm going to be telling you how to gather the information um, on your patients that you get. Before the pandemic, you would have gotten three. I guess now that the pandemic hits and with all of the uh, maybe restrictions, maybe you might be down to two clients. But either way, we're going to be looking at how we gather information so that we can sequence it, put it together and then um, get a good uh, um, flow on the day of the exam so you're not flustered and you will be able to finish in time and finish of course with a high degree of accuracy all right so first things first last video uh we talked about you know the you you're gathering of the information in the handoff and all of that just check out video number two you will see it so in this video um the next thing that you want to gather is the pa the patient record so if you're using the electronic documentation you want to go into the patient record log into the computer always remember guys when it comes on to privacy and um, the protection of uh, the patient's privacy don't leave your password hanging around do not paste it somewhere that somebody can get it always make sure that you keep your password to yourself and um, for those who are doing NCLEX exams sometimes you know a question pops up that um, you know the nurse has something very important to document and she forgets her password and she needs to make that documentation like right now um, is it okay to share your password with that nurse just so that she can document the answer is no all right let her write that documentation on paper get it to reset the password and all of that right at all costs you always protect your patient's privacy so if you're lock docking into your um, computer system um you know whatever documentation software that you use you log in there and of course you're going to pull up your patient information so you would go the unit that you're on of course you would go into um, the patient list and you will select that patient and pull up your patient prepare um, pull up that patient open that patient's chart if you are using the paper chart system of course then you go to where those paper charts are kept they are filed and you will obtain those paper charts and you obtain the paper charts all right this is what you're going to be looking for so here are some key areas in the chart that you want to look guys to get uh, ad adequate information on the patient that you're going to be presenting and on the patient that you're going to be doing your assessment on so that way you leave no stone unturned all right everything you want to make sure that you get all that important information that you're going to need all right so when you get the patient's chart whether you're going in your computer or it is that you have a paper chart that you're taking down um, from where it is um, filed and may remember that we don't keep paper charts lying around we can't leave them at the patient's bedside we can't leave them anywhere in the uh the, the hallway or even at uh you know the, whether it is the room or the cubicle we don't leave paper charts lying around remember that we don't want to um violate the patient in terms of their their right to privacy all right and so we always make sure that we keep that safe. All right, so we get the paper chart or you get into your computer and you're going to know the first thing that you want to look at. All right, so, so you, when you open your chart, you want to make sure that you look carefully on the chart and make sure that that is the patient that you have been assigned. All right, because if you have not been assigned that patient, well, you really don't have uh any business in that chart really unless you know you you're really doing what is called functional nursing or team nursing rather if you're doing team nursing where 
you know, every nurse does have access to each patient on the unit, then that's fine. But if you're really functional nursing where you really assign just those patients, then stick to those patients so that you don't have to go into other charts. So find those charts. And when you find the chart, all right, here are the areas in the chart that you want to look at. So you want to look at um, the, you want to look at what, uh, um, the history, right? And you want to look at the, uh, the physical of the patient. So you want to look at the H and P, all right? History and physical. And this is usually, of course, uh, medical. So this you're going to be looking in the uh, in the progress notes, right? And this now, of course, is a doctor's progress notes. You want to be looking at the history and um, the physical. Now, why is this your first stop? After ascertaining and making sure that this is the right patient that you have, all right? Why is it that you want to go to the history and the physical in the chart, all right? So history and physical means that you're going into the uh, the medical progress notes, all right? Or you want to go into the doctor's progress notes, all right? So that's where you're going, into that progress notes. So when you go into the progress notes, all right, history and physical, which is the H and P, why do you need that? Because this gives you the background on the patient, all right? Why did the patient um, come to the facility when they came in? And when they came in, um, what was actually done for them? So the history and physical will tell you where the patient presented, when the patient presented, and how the patient presented. And it will also tell you what physical assessment um, was made initially when the patient came. It will also tell you if a provisional diagnosis was made at the time. You know, provisional that based on the differentials that was presented, all right, this is really what they came up with as a provisional diagnosis. So you want to see if a provisional diagnosis was made or a diagnosis the patient was diagnosed and what the problem was. And then also you will see what sorts of um, assessments in the form of diagnostics, right? So what diagnostics were done? So in the history and physical, um, it'll give you the background, what happened, why the patient came, and initially when the patient was seen, you know, what was the type of assessment done, what diagnostics were done. So you want to look at the initial labs that the patient presents with. And the reason why you want to look at those initial labs, because on the day today that you have received the patient, you want to be able to compare those labs to the ones that you have now, because that though will give you... Um, uh, an outline whether or not there is any changes or it has gotten worse or what has resolved. So look at those labs initially. Um, were x-rays done? You want to look at that. Did the patient have a CT scan, MRI? Did they have um, any other diagnostics that were done? Ultrasound? Did they have to do, um, say, did they go to the cath lab? What was the case? What was the situation? Um, that will also tell you what uh, medication that the patient got when you look at the progress notes. Initially, what initial treatment um, the patient had. Why do you need all this? Because this is going to help you to go do a very good background presentation on the patient um, when you're doing your uh, when you're presenting the patient to the examiner. So you have a very good background presentation when you do that by doing that. All right, so the history and the physical, you want to see that. Um, so that will give you a nice background also. Um, some doctors are very good uh, when it comes on to their assessment, and sometimes you'll find some good social history there. Um, not all doctors go deep into the social history, but some of them do go deep into it, and it'll give you a good information in terms of living condition, um, you know, the age of the patient will be there. So, of course, that will give you the developmental stage of the patient, which also is good to consider developmental stage because developmental stage, according to Eric Erickson, does tell you what past, you know, is happening at that particular stage. And it also helps you to shape that care plan in terms of what you're doing. Social history will also tell you, uh, you know, how many uh, members of the family are there, where they live, it kind of give you a background of the, uh, you know, the patient living conditions and the whatever basic amenities they have or they don't have. 
All right, so if there is no social history there, that makes you know now that um, if you do not see the social history in the nurse's progress notes as in the nurse's admission notes, which is what we're going to talk about next, then it means now that when you're questioning the patient and doing your assessment as in gathering your data, um, as in subjective and objective data, you know that there are some things now that you need to ask because you didn't find those things in the chart. So that is telling you that you have that information to gather um, from your clients. And so the history and the physical is really what you want to pull up. All right, what is this patient's name? How old is the patient? What's the background? What did they present with? What initial assessment? What treatment? What diagnostics were done initially? Um, what those labs looked like at the time when the patient got admitted? You want to look at those, like I said, because you're going to want to compare what sort of medication um, was prescribed and um, are those still the same current medications that was that what recommendations were made so you want to pull up that history and physical look for it in the paper chart doctor's progress notes you'll find it um, in your computer chart and of course you go on the HMP um, and you'll find it and it doesn't really matter what documenting system you're using I mean if you're using um, you know, if you use Cerna, if you use uh, Meadows, Athena, if you use Epic, uh, you know, whatever documenting system you use, you're always going to find the history and the physical um, there. And so it will give you a nice uh, background on that. So look at the H uh, and P, which is the history physical. Now, the next thing that you want to go look at. So this now is um, one of the things that you're pulling up to look on because you're doing uh, gathering the information so that you can make a good patient presentation all right and this is also good for uh, you know medical students or PA or, or um, clinical nurse specialists you always want to look at your uh, history and physicals because then you want to be able to make a very good presentation because that's what gives you the background on the patient so now as the student nurse here um, doing your practical exam uh, history and physical that's going to give you your information and then you want to look at the last set of progress notes that the doctor wrote so is it um so so you're going to look at the last all right so last progress notes um all right last progress notes and that's um for uh medical right so the last progress notes that the doctor wrote look at those the last progress notes will tell you what was the last set of assessment that was done by the medical team and what um, recommendations they made. Did they change the diagnosis? Did they add a new diagnosis? Did they add any new treatment or are they um, continuing with the same treatment? All right. So you want to look at the last set of progress notes that was written by the doctor because then that takes you now up to speed with the current medical plan or the current piece of it. I remember that it's nursing and collaborative intervention. So that is why you're looking at this because you have to collaborate. All right, so we look at the last progress notes that was done, written by the doctor, and that will give us a very good um, idea of what the current plan of care is medically. So that when your uh, examiner asks you, so what is the current medical plan? You can just um, you know say what it is because you would have seen that uh, uh, as well. So having the background history physical that gives you information. The last set of progress notes that the doctor wrote also tells you what the current medical plan is, and you're also looking at current labs. All right. So as part of uh, you know that, look at current labs um, or or slash diagnostics. All right. So current labs, current diagnostics. All right, current labs, current diagnostics. So you're looking at that uh, as well. So why do you want the current labs? Because you want to see in terms of the, um, you know, the urea electrolytes. Uh, you want to see what is going on with the chemistry, as in the CBCs. You want to know what's going on there if the patient is on anticoagulant and stuff like that. The INR, the PTT will always be there. So you can take a look at that, all right? So it gives you a good picture in terms of the homeostasis because you want to know in terms of stability, homeostasis, and um, so looking at the current labs. And then you can make a comparison to the initial labs 
to see whether or not there is improvement and of course that you can do as part of your presentation to say initially when the client presented the wbc the white blood cell count uh was at twenty five thousand. the current white blood cell count though is at eight thousand, which is within normal limits so of course that means a lot of progress have been made so you want to look at um the uh current labs as well so the last progress notes the last doctor's notes as in the progress notes for uh, and then also the current lab diagnostics all of that gives you a nice picture of um the current medical plan then the next place that you want to hop to um in that chart whether it's a paper chart or your electronic chart you want to go now to the nurse's notes all right so you're going to find the nursing admission notes all right you find the nursing admission notes because that uh is gonna give you information also uh on that all right so the nursing admission notes you want to go in that next and see what the nurse wrote on admission in terms of you know um what is the type of assessment that the nurse did because sometimes some things that are missing in history and physical and the doctor's progress notes you'll pick it up in the nurse's um admission notes like the social history immunization um uh, in terms of current immunizations or stuff like that you'll pick that up there as well because then you have to go through that admission sheet so if you go through the admission sheet that the nurse did you will find all that information and that is good so if you're using a code the doc um the electronic documenting system and if you go back through the admissions um sheet that the nurse did you will see all of this there if you're using your paper chart of course then you want to look at the nurse's admission notes that was written there it gives you information uh the nurse will tell you how the client present the nurse will also give you a background in her uh his her admission notes in terms of their presentation and they'll uh gives you you'll see what the initial nursing diagnosis was as well and uh you'll also see social history or other things the things that are missing are the things that you want to be taking note of because when you go to do your assessment of the patient these things you want to ask so that you can fill in the gap where you are finding like the information or any gap is missing from that all right so you want to do that and then now um having looked at the nurse's um admission notes then just like you looked at the last set of progress notes written by the medical team by the doctor you want to look at the last set of progress notes that the nurse wrote all right so why is it that you need that so um so we're looking at last uh nurse all right progress notes all right we're looking at that last nurse progress notes all right so we're looking at the last progress notes and uh, that is because that will tell you in terms of the nurses uh uh interventions the last set of interventions and plan of care it will give you that as well all right so looking at the last uh, nurses progress notes it will tell you you will also see trends in terms of the vital signs that the nurse wrote that you can use that now to make comparison when you do your vital signs uh on assessment of the patient so you're going to do that all right and um also in the last progress notes the nurse wrote as in the last set of nurses notes it will also give you a direction you know remember nurses notes is communication tool that um ensures the continuation of care as one of that so you want to look at it and you see all right so this was what nurse wrote and then you know if the uh this implementation that you see was there any recommendation um that the nurse was going to follow up on that you want to follow up on that you also now want to go now and look at the care plan as in the nursing care plan so if there's a care plan cardex for example in jamaica um at the university of the west indies all right um you know the the the, the care plan cardex is separate from you know the the the, the, the documentation chart so you have your nurses notes doctors progress notes physiotherapist notes and the rest of the medical team um, in that chart but the nurses care plan cardex um, at the university hospital of the west indies is separate so you want to find that cardex to see um, what's the last set of care plan that was written because then you go have to think about 
updating that care plan if anything changes based on your assessment that you're going to do. So look at that care plan cardex. I think the Andrews Memorial Hospital also uses a care plan cardex. So you want to do that. But like for uh, the Spanish Town Hospital, the Mandeville Regional Hospital, um, Kingston Public Hospital and some other hospitals around the island, um, you know, they use, uh, you know, doing that care plan fully in um, the chart. All right. So you could look to see what was the last nurse's diagnosis that the nurse wrote in their nurse's notes. And then that will tell you uh, if you have to update the care plan based on the assessment that you're about to do to see whether or not it's the same diagnosis you're going to come up with or something needs changing because some things might have been resolved. And because it's resolved, you want to update the care plan, take that off and put something on there. All right. So you want to look at the last set of nurses progress notes. You want to take a look at the care plan, the care plan cardex or cardices to see what is happening. And then now you want to go now into your MAR. All right. Your medication administration record. You want to go into the MAR. All right. Let me just uh, clean this off up the top here. We're talking about SPAN. All right, uh, I'm just going to put that up at the top. Okay, so you, you want to go in the MAR, all right? So this is the medication administration record. And um, that's, of course, you will see. Now, this will go take you into the medication to see what medication um, we have. So you're going to look at the MAR and you're going to look at the treatment chart, all right? So you're going to look at the treatment chart. And uh, then that is going to tell you what medication orders are there. All right. So looking at the medication orders, that will tell you the current medication that the, um, that the patient is on or the patients are on. And uh, looking at the MAR will also let you know the time of administration. When is it due? So if you're using your computer documenting system, you can go straight to the MAR. Usually the MAR is color coded, will tell you what is coming up, what is due or what is overdue. All right. Now for paper chart documentation, all right, you go to um, what the, 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 the medication cardex or, or the medication administration record, the MAR, and you will see um, the frequency. You will see the type of medication and you will see the frequency and you will see when the last dose of that medication was given you'll see when the next dose is due so you know all that so uh, taking a look at those medication will also give you a picture or a window into you know the patient's condition or the patient's problem right based on what the medication is for so having the knowledge of this medication now you want to look now and you say okay all right, so you'll be able to answer about your medication as to why the patient is on this medication. And um, also you want to look at those drugs. And when you're looking at the drugs, here's what you want to be thinking when you're looking at the medication, guys. So right away in your head, you want to be looking at the medication in the, um, in the treatment chart and in the medication administration record. And you want to start to think about drug disease interaction so all right looking at the diagnosis and the problem that the patient has the um, are these medications that you're looking at are they the right type of medication and um are can they be given together so you look at drug drug interaction all right and then of course drug food interaction what sorts of food is it that you don't want the patient to be on when they are on certain medications that kind of thing and later on in subsequent videos, we'll talk about medication administration and what are the things to consider when it comes on to administering medication just to make sure that we get accurate administration. All right. So um, having gone through all of this, all right. So the history and the physical um, that was written in the medical progress notes. Then you look at the last set of medical progress notes that's written because that tells you what the current medical plan is. Look at the current labs and diagnostics. Look at the nursing admin, um, admission notes. And the last set of progress notes that the nurse wrote gives you also um, where the current plan is. As in terms of the nursing care plan, um, look at the nursing um, care plan and look to see what is there going to be needed to update. You want to go to your MAR 
as the medication administration record and you want to also go to the treatment chart just to make sure that what is on the mar matches up with what is on the treatment chart so that way we know that um, you know the orders are right and nothing is off. You want to take a good look at your medication, make sure that nothing is expired, all right? Because one of the worst thing can happen to you is that you go to administer a medication and your examiner discovers that the medication is expired, you're going to run in problems. So you take a sharp eye from early, you know, looking at all of this so that you know exactly what it is that you're looking for. So now having gathered all this information, all right, um, you know, when the examiner comes on the unit, guys, sometimes, you know, some schools will give you, um, you know, a, a sheet of paper, usually an eight and a half by 14, so that you can do some jottings or write some things on that. That sheet of paper, uh, the whole purpose of it is it, it tends to save you somewhat because writing down things on it like for example the background on the patient and all of these things that you write on it and then um, you know your plan of care and all of this goes on that though you're going to be actually doing your care plan on the papers that they will provide you all right so you're not going to bring your own um, paper to do your care plan all right no they'll present you with papers to the care plan and they might also present you with some blank sheets that you can do some notation um, when you write notations on those blank sheets, it helps. Say, for example, you know, the, the, the exam time is up on you and they might look at what the things that you wrote down on those sheets that you probably never got a chance to transfer yet. And they look at it and say, well, you have everything here. You just never got a chance to transfer it over there. And that will save you. So it does come in handy. But um, you want to make sure that you balance out though. You know, you don't want to just focus on just that blank sheet of paper if you get a blank sheet of paper if not you really want to want to focus on um you know you're documenting uh when you're documenting in the chart all right just make sure that you're doing your head to toe assessment you're documenting properly so having gathered all of this information now you want to um go to your patient's uh, bedside because you you know you go back there again and you introduce yourself if you never got a chance to properly introduce yourself because everything was just moving fast now you can introduce yourself be make, make sure or be sure to tell um your, your patient you know that you're going to be doing an examination today you'll have people who come in to watch you see how you perform nursing care on them and uh, that also like i said in the last video it's really the patient's bill of rights that you're protecting because they have the right to be informed and the right to autonomy, which is self-determination. But it also helps them psychologically to prepare and it helps you as well so that nothing takes them by surprise. So it might make your life a lot easier. All right, so you gather this information now. Um, you, you, when you look, a matter of fact, remember, when you look on your MAR, and your treatment charts be sure to take note of what allergies the patient has a matter of fact in uh if it's computer documentation there's usually um at the at the top of the um uh, at the patient's chart when you open the chart usually at the top of it you will see what the allergies are and those are usually bright red or yellow or so but it's usually there that it stands out Sometimes it's no known allergies, but sometimes there are a whole lot of allergies up there. So you want to know and take note of that information, what the patient's allergies are. It means, therefore, that if you don't see any allergies in the chart, you're going to ask questions. So this is one of the questions that you want to write down to ask. I didn't see any allergies. I need to ask if this patient is allergic to anything. All right. But usually allergies are written um you know on the top of every page in a paper chart usually there's a little line there for allergies uh, for diagnosis uh you know the, the patient medical record number their date of birth the unit that they're on their name is there and usually the doctor that is seeing them is also on the paper if you find blank papers in the paper chart where something is written on that paper and the, the top of the chart uh, of the paper is not filled out be sure to fill it out because things like these, your examiner will be looking on and say, how did you go through this paper chart and you realize that information was missing off the top here and you didn't complete it? Why are you doing that? Because if some, if a chart falls out, 
somebody is supposed to be able to see the ID, you know, the name, what chart, what, what unit the patient is on, and it's able to actually um, get that back in the right chart. So always make sure that your charts are properly filled out and, um, you know, whatever the requirements is on it, just make sure that. But be sure to look if the patient has allergies and see what those allergies are. And if you don't see any allergies, be sure to ask the patient about allergies so that you can get that documented. So now you go to your bedside and um, you're, you know, like I said, introduce yourself to your patient again, ask the patient their name, make sure that you did put your ID ban on your patient, go back to uh, video number one and you will see all of that preparation there. All right, make sure your ID is on your patient and all of this is good. And then, of course, you want to start to do your, uh, gather your information. So whatever information you didn't see in the chart, you already have enough uh, information, but there are some things that might be missing that you want to ask that will be relevant to your assessment that you want to fill in the gap, okay? So um, with, with, with that, your subjective data, all right? So with your subjective data, you will be um, getting information from the patient, right? And remember now, this is your communication skills comes into play. So when you're gathering subjective data, if you go back and um, in the channel, you will see uh, videos on the nursing process and on the assessment, you will see all that information about, uh, you know, data gathering. All right. But you're using open-ended questions. All right. Because open-ended question allow the patient to talk. Close-ended questions is really just going to give you a yes, no, maybe so answer. So be sure um, to use up your communication skills here. All right, so you get to gather your subjective data, objective data, do your um, head to toe assessment. All right, uh, or systems assessment, right? It's, it, um, there are two way, two approaches to it. You can do a systems approach or you can do a head to toe approach, but either way, you're going to end up at the same place. All right, so with, with the um, head to toe, approach usually you start with the alertness of the patient their orientation what level of consciousness they have that kind of thing uh and then of course you start to look at what is presented in the head mucous membranes how are those looking head and neck that's okay and then um you want to come down to your cardiopulmonary area so you're going to be looking at um, documenting on your cardiovascular um, um, system, all right? Or you can go respiratory system, then cardiovascular, all right? So you do your airway, then you do your circulation, all right? So respiratory system, uh, you're looking at the chest wall, you're looking, uh, you know, symmetry, you know, to gather your information, uh, looking there, symmetry, how's the patient breathing in terms of depth and all of that. Um, if you, and I'm gonna tell you both of them and see if you want to do systems, you can do, if you want to do head to toe, you can do, like I said, both of them, they're going to actually take you to the same place. All right, so with the head to toe, all right, so respiratory, uh, you're going to be looking, of course, you're using your inspection, all right, your palpation, your percussion and your auscultation, so that's your IPPA, all right, you're doing that. Uh, in terms of your um, your health assessment tools, all right. So inspecting, you're looking, palpating, of course, you're feeling, uh, percuss, you're eliciting sounds. Remember, of course, you're looking um, over your the respiratory area in terms of lung area because it's really an ear filled area. You should be getting uh, resonance, all right. So nice resonance if you percuss between those intercostal spaces. You should get some resonance all the way through. If you're getting hyper resonance, it's probably an indication that fluid might be there mixed with air. All right. But when we get into other videos of looking at our health assessment, we'll get into all of that. But this is where you're applying your skills there, guys, in gathering your data, respiratory system, um, cardiovascular system, right? You know, what's the heart sounds like? that, you know, what's the pulse or all of that looking like? Is the person having any form of dependent edema, that kind of thing? All of that now is your cardiovascular system. All right, <laughs> that's your cardiovascular system. All right, and then of course, you know, from cardiovascular, you're doing your GI system. And the GI system now, remember, 
it's um it's not ippa for your gi system all right don't want to make that mistakes you want to go i a per pal so for gi system in terms of your assessment approach it is i a per pal so it is inspection auscultation percussion palpation last for when it comes on to your abdomen or GI system, you want to do do that. All right. Now, of course, um, if you see if the patient is complaining of, of, of any form of abdominal pain, remember that you leave the tender area for last. All right. That's the rule. Leave the area tender tender area for last. Bear that in mind. And um, so when you're doing your inspection, looking at your abdomen, you know, an A, which is auscultation. Because if you were to palpate before you auscultate and you disturb things, and then that might distort your findings. So that's why it is that you're taking that route. And then, of course, your genital urinary system, you're doing your assessment on that. All right. Um, is the patient voiding spontaneously? Do they have urinary catheter? Do they have nephrostomy tubes? Uh, how is that going? You want to look at that. Then you want to look at, um, you know, musculoskeletal system and then you of course you want to look at the skin so you take that approach then that's really head to toe if you take a systems approach now all right um so then that still starts from the head because you have to look at the level of consciousness and all of that of the patient all right um a systems approach if the patient has ng tube in you would put that under the gi system if the patient has um, any fluid going, you put that on a circulator which falls on the cardiovascular system. All right, if the patient has oxygen on or, um, you know, any form of oxygenation, then you put that under the respiratory system. So if you're taking a systems approach, you can do it that way in terms of whatever attachment is on the patient, you put it under the relevant system. So a patient with, GI, uh, with, with an NG tube would be your GI system. All right, the patient has IVs, you put that under the cardiovascular. So when you get to cardiovascular, put your uh, put all of your IVs under that because that's circulation, that's fluid. All right. Of course, obviously catheter and nephrostomy tubes and all of those would definitely go under your genital urinary system. So that's a good way to structure your assessment and that flows. Now the focus assessment, guys, is the system that you discover to have the problem. That is the focus assessment. So the examiner is expecting to see details on that system. So whereas the other systems are, are normal and there's no abnormalities in those systems, then, you know, the examiner is not expecting to see details on those systems because, you're, you know, if you were to do that, you wouldn't finish the exam. But you want to do your focus on, um, assessment on the system that is presenting the problem. So if the respiratory system is presenting the problem, you are expected to put details on that. Uh, if it's musculoskeletal, let's say, for example, the patient has a fracture, um, you're expected to put details on that. So we expect to see you um, looking at your five P's there. You know, you're looking at the pulse, looking at the pala, um, the paresthesia. You, you want, we expect you to do that. So you do what is called a neurovascular assessment. So the neurovascular assessment uh, you know, on your musculoskeletal, if a person has, a, say, a chaos, traction, or anything that on musculoskeletal system focus, also expect you to mention the muscle grade, the muscle strength um, when it comes on to that system. So focus. There should be detail on the system where the problem is. All right. So bear that in mind and all of that. So having gathered all that information, um, additional questions you ask in the patient, if you didn't see anything about where they live or who they live with and what are, you know, who is at home in terms of caregiver, do they have children? And if so, is somebody at home who's a breadwinner? All of this information you can gather, um, you know, do they have basic amenities in terms of the basic needs, running water, uh, garbage disposal, you know, in terms of the shelter, in terms of access to health care? you still question them on all of that, all right? And um, all of this you need because you're going to need that to put a good care plan together to identify the problems, all right? And so when you make your diagnostic cluster, meaning the number of problems, you're able now to come down to find the major ones that definitely, if you take care of these, you'll take care of a whole lot of the others, all right? 
you know, it's more like we refer to like an um, on, um, umbrella diagnosis, all right? So um, you want to do that. And then having done that, you get your vital signs. And after you've got your vital signs now, all right, then the next thing you do is that you're going to be putting in that plan. So remember, we're doing soap. And um, so the S and the O in your soap is equal to the A in your ad pie. All right. So this is your nursing process, assessment, uh, diagnosis, planning, implementing, evaluating. And then SOAP method over here that you're using to document the S and the O, that is equal to your A in ad pie. All right. And then now the A, which is assessment in your SOAP, that A that stands for assessment is really diagnosis. What's the conclusion? What's the assessment? In other words, what problem did you assess? That A is equal to the D in ad pie, right? And then, of course, you have your P now, which is planning, and that P is equal to the P in ad pie. So this is your goal setting. Remember, when you're documenting in your paper chart, do not make the mistake and state that plan as an intervention because that is an often mistake that the student will make when they are documenting. So do not state this plan um, as, as, as intervention, all right? So if your examiner were to ask when they come to question you after you're presenting the patient, and they say, okay, so what is the plan for this patient? They're asking you what's the goal, what's the outcome that do you have in mind? And so you now you will say, all right, the outcome is that the, he will have improved nutrition, um, you know, uh, by the end of the week. Or the outcome is that he will um, have an improved appetite by the end of the eight hours or by the end of the four hours or 12 hours. Or he will have improved oxygenation by the end of this. That's the plan, the goal, the outcome, right? If you start to say um, the plan is to administer oxygen, the plan is to put them in a semi fowlers position, the plan is to teach deep breathing and coughing. That's not plan. That's intervention. So don't make the mistake. All right. When you're responding, respond. It's a goal. It's an outcome. That's what you're answering to. And then, of course, your implementation now in your paper chart, you are not. And let me emphasize not. You are not going to itemize implementation as if you are writing a hypothetical care plan. You're not going to do that. The implementation that you will be doing is what you do for the patient throughout that four hours or the shift that you are there. So whatever you document that you did, that's what the implementation will be. All right. So when you do the dressing and you document it, it's implementing. When you do the um, the medication administration that you will do and document it's implementing. All right, whatever communication, whatever teaching you do, implementing. And then evaluating is going to be a summary statement, uh, you know, and then also in that summary it will indicate to the oncoming nurse, uh, you know, what things that needs to be done because there's usually a recommendation in that, right, when it comes on to the evaluating. So that's that. But what you want to do is you do this and... Um, you know, you move on to your next patient and you do that and you get all of this done. One of the tricks that you can do, guys, is this. Um, when you finish doing your head-to-toe assessment of your patient, you have your vital signs and everything in. Um, under the assessment, which is a diagnosis, because we're talking about soap. And remember, we said that the A in soap is equal to the D in ad pie. The diagnosis, go ahead and write those diagnoses in that chart or on that care plan, all right? So now when you're ready now to transcribe your care plan so that you can give it to the examiner, you don't have to brainstorm again. Take the same diagnosis that you just wrote down and put them there. All you need to do is identify the need that they fall under and to prioritize them. That's all you're going to do. All right, move on to your next patient. You do the same thing. All right. Now, the reason why you do all of this good background information and have all that information um, gathered or you might have them written down on that you know, piece of plain paper that they afforded you. If they come and they, you know, you're in the middle of one assessment and haven't completely completed 
the other one because you did this lovely background check you are able to make a good presentation because you would have already introduced yourself to your patient and you did all that assessment but never had the chance to document yet but you gathered your information so good that you can confidently make your presentation you already know what your outcome is going to be and uh what is it going forward all right so this is um your preparation for span that's a practical exam for rnr regional um examination for nurses registration so this video um on span preparation is especially for um student nurses down in the caribbean and um this is gonna be good for you all right don't forget to subscribe um share like and of course make your comments all right in our next um uh, next time i'll be um talking about um doing um your practical piece of it we'll be looking at demonstrating some dressing um using limited resources and how you can be innovative uh, medication administration also all right okay so um all right so don't forget subscribe yeah, you know, like your videos, um, share them, of course, leave a comment, leave a question, and um, this is good. All right, so until next time, guys, I'll see you.